Blue Origin, New Glenn launch date inches closer. The big New Glenn rocket has finally undergone the much anticipated test, a wet dress rehearsal. This milestone, once again, further fueled a sense of hope and anticipation for a flight this year, with only 11 days left until the end of 2024. However, once again, it worries NASA's managers a lot. What does the future hold for New Glenn afterward? Find out everything in today's episode. On December 16th, Blue Origin CEO Dave Limp posted an interesting tweet on X, promising a wet dress rehearsal test for the New Glenn rocket before its launch in the not-too-distant future. We are all clear to complete a wet dress rehearsal this week ahead of hot fire for New Glenn. The tweet, while raising one more sense of hope and anticipation, still got the public excited. Everyone hopes Dave Limp will be a person who talks the talk and walks the walk. And now we can temporary relief as three days later. The massive 320-foot-tall New Glenn rocket, sat on launch pad 36 at Cape Canaveral, was fueled but not launched, signaling a wet dress rehearsal as anticipated. After multiple hours of steam venting from the rocket, all activity stopped. Yes, the test was completed. Of course, the seven main engines on its new Glenn rocket were apparently not fired, so this was not a hot fire test, which will come next if Thursday's test was successful. On the same day, talking about the Blue Origin, the FAA said, Blue Origin is the fourth commercial space operator to onboard the Space Data Integrator, SDI tool, which shares rocket flight data with the FAA to enhance airspace safety and efficiency during space operations. If all is found to have gone well during these tests, the rocket's debut launch may occur before the end of 2024, which as of right now is only roughly 10 days away. It might be on Christmas, who knows? Some Blue Origin employees noted that they were being asked to work on Christmas Day this year in Florida. Anyway, a launch window is not yet listed on the Federal Aviation Administration warnings, so we have a lot to look forward to in the upcoming days. The Space Coast Office of Tourism has the launch listed as occurring no earlier than December 30th, which makes the situation even more complex. You know, the vehicle needs to launch as soon as possible and has to be successful in the first attempt because this involves the timelines of the following flights. The big rocket had been scheduled to launch NASA's twin Escapade Mars probes as early as spring 2025. The mission was initially to launch on October 13th, but was delayed later due to New Glenn's unpreparedness. If the second launch window in the spring continues to be canceled, it would pose serious implications for various aspects of the mission, including costs, scheduling, and technical challenges, potentially adding further setbacks to Blue Origin's already tarnished reputation. This is clearly bad news for both the National Space Agency and the company itself. However, the delay of the Escapade Mars launch is not as bad as the delay of NASA's Artemis mission. The Artemis program is an international effort that involves collaboration with commercial and international partners. The overall program cost is expected to be over $93 billion between 2012 and 2025. Like SpaceX's Starship, Blue Origin's New Glenn is an element needed for Blue Origin's human lander for the Artemis V mission. It will be the first crewed flight of the Blue Moon lander and will be the third lunar landing of the Artemis program as well. Additionally, the Super Heavy Lift rocket will be used to fuel the lunar lander in space for missions to the moon, like what Starship will do. Therefore, New Glenn's progress is all eyes on NASA. Lisa Watson Morgan, the program manager for the human landing system, said, New Glenn, you know, obviously, you know that they're vertical on LC-36. So they're going through all their ground processing, getting ready for their hot fire. She also expected a hot static fire test on Thursday, immediately after the wet dress rehearsal. Maybe, maybe, maybe today, maybe soon. I think it's very soon. And so to that, we are really looking forward to that blue ring flight that is coming up for Blue Origin. So we get insight into their processing, their hot fires, into their early commercial launches.
and that gives us confidence that as we're moving forward, that the launch vehicle system is making progress. NASA's concerns about New Glenn's slow progress are justified. Because not only the lunar lander, Blue Origin is also developing the complex in-orbit refueling technology serving Artemis. Of course, they have to test it in practice through several pilot campaigns to improve it gradually. That will take a lot of time and effort. SpaceX, another NASA partner in Artemis, has acknowledged that fact, so they're going as fast as they can. Between 2023 and 2024, SpaceX's Starship program has taken to the skies with a total of six test flights, providing the team with invaluable data to better and upgrade the rocket into its more modern iterations. Block 2, for example, is a little bit taller and carries a lot more propellant, so this will be a significantly more capable vehicle than what we've seen before at carrying payload into orbit. The hardware will be the star of the show in Flight 7, leaving the entire space industry excited and anticipating. Unlike the rival Blue Origin, SpaceX attempted and nailed a daring orbital refueling test of Starship in Flight 3, where the firm transferred around 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen from Starship's header tank to its main tank while it was in space. The test's result is an important stepping stone for next year's orbital refueling test between two Starships. Furthermore, SpaceX stunned the whole world with the unprecedented feat in Flight 5 which witnessed Super Heavy come back to Earth about seven minutes after liftoff, nestling next to its launch tower, which secured the rocket with its chopstick arm. In conclusion, SpaceX's rapid growth and unexpected success dwarf Blue Origin, which although founded before SpaceX two years but its footprints in space are just counted on the fingers. Obviously, what the Washington-based company gets today is totally in the crystal ball of many people. You might know that Elon and Jeff used to have a good relationship in the early days when both men's space exploration ambitions started to heat up. Unfortunately, the two mindsets were very different from the start. During an intimate dinner between two billionaires in 2004, Musk likened Bezos's rocket work to barking up the wrong tree. He also revealed that SpaceX had tested some of Bezos's ideas and they were all stupid. Elon even added, I actually did my best to give good advice, which he largely ignored. As time passed, their paths increasingly diverged. While Elon spreads the workaholic culture to SpaceX's environment, the work style at Blue Origin seemed more laid back, or lazy as some describe it. In a candid 2018 internal memo, a Blue Origin executive boldly declared that Blue is kind of lazy compared to SpaceX, highlighting the stark differences in work culture between the two aerospace giants. At SpaceX, long hours are the norm, with employees often expected to work through vacations and endure burnout as part of the company's relentless drive for innovation. In contrast, Blue Origin maintains a more traditional approach, where a standard 40-hour work week is common. However, some Blue executives have expressed concerns that this conventional schedule may not suffice to achieve their ambitious goals. One executive even suggested that if the company expects more than 40 hours from its staff, they should communicate that clearly and adjust performance evaluations accordingly. Elon Musk echoed this sentiment, famously stating, nobody ever changed the world on 40 hours a week advocating for the grueling hours that SpaceX employees often clock, sometimes reaching 80 to over 100 hours weekly. While SpaceX thrives on a high-pressure environment that some describe as SlaveX, Blue Origin is seen as more laid back, with a focus on work-life balance. Yet this approach has led to criticisms about their pace and urgency in achieving milestones. As Blue Origin strives to catch up with SpaceX's rapid advancements, the contrasting work cultures raise questions about what it truly takes to succeed in the fiercely competitive space industry. One more interesting tidbit. While Jeff Bezos's rocket company, Blue Origin, is often seen as a paradise thanks to its emphasis on work-life balance, his other venture, Amazon, has earned a reputation that feels more like hell.
Critics have been vocal about Amazon's alleged monopolistic practices and the mistreatment of its workers. Headlines paint a grim picture of delivery drivers enduring grueling hours without bathroom breaks, reportedly resorting to peeing in bottles, and warehouse employees facing relentless pressure to work faster. The stark contrast between the two companies highlights a troubling dichotomy. At Blue Origin, the focus is on maintaining employee well-being, while at Amazon, the chorus of complaints about working conditions and corporate ethics grows louder. Recently, the Federal Trade Commission FTC, has taken aim at Amazon, accusing it of employing unfair and illegal strategies to maintain its monopoly power. This lawsuit underscores the growing scrutiny over Amazon's practices, as regulators allege that the company stifles competition and exploits its market dominance. Bezos has defended the treatment of Amazon staff, but acknowledged the company needs to do a better job in his final letter to shareholders before he stepped down as CEO earlier in 2021. The motive behind his step back is to focus more on his space company. Bezos is the founder and owner of Blue Origin, a company he has previously described as his most important entity. He often finances the company by selling his stocks from his share in Amazon. The Washington-based online retailer Bezos, founded 30 years ago, is now the largest commercial business in the world, achieving $386.1 billion in sales in 2020. Bezos talked about his passion for space in a 2018 interview with Via Satellite. I have been fascinated with space and rocket propulsion since I was a five-year-old boy and watched the Apollo program. I watched Neil and Buzz step on the moon, he said. My high school girlfriend is on record as saying that she is convinced I started Amazon just to get enough money to be able to start Blue Origin. I always had in mind this idea of getting into the space business. And of course, the financial success that I had as a result of Amazon is what allowed me to start Blue Origin. However, Blue Origin is locked in heated competition with launch market leader SpaceX. Perhaps Jeff was born for sailing rather than building rockets. So by 2023, he appointed a former senior Amazon executive, Dave Limp, as the new CEO of the rocket company. During the interview to become the CEO of the billionaire's space venture, Dave Limp had only one question. Jeff, is Blue Origin a hobby or a business? Limp asked. After 14 years as a senior Amazon executive, Limp said that he made it clear to Bezos that he wasn't interested in leading Blue Origin if the nearly 25-year-old venture wasn't intended to be a serious company. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.